Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Yankee Stadium for the fourth game of the 1976 World Series. Here are the official lineups. First, the National League champions, the Cincinnati Reds. Here is the manager of the defending world champions, number 10, Sparky Anderson. Batting first, playing third base, number 14, Pete Rose. Batting second, in right field, number 30, Ken Griffey. Batting third, playing second base, number eight, Joe Morgan. Batting fourth, playing first base, number 24, Tony Perez. Batting fifth, the designated hitter, number 22, Dan Dreesen. Batting sixth, in left field, number 15, George Foster. Batting seventh, the catcher, number five, Johnny Bench. Batting eighth, in center field, number 20, Cesar Geronimo. Batting ninth, the shortstop, number 13, Dave Concepcion. And the pitcher, warming up in the bullpen, number 38, Gary Nolan. And now, the rest of the Cincinnati Reds. Ladies and gentlemen, the American League champions, the New York Yankees. The manager of the American League champions, number one, Billy Martin. Batting first in center field, number 17, Mickey Rivers. Batting second in left field, number six, Roy White. Batting third, the catcher, number 15, Furman Munson. Batting fourth, playing first base, number 10, Chris Chambliss. Batting fifth, the designated hitter, number 38, Carlos May. Batting sixth, playing third base, number nine, Greg Nettles. Batting seventh, in right field, number 23, Oscar Gamble. Batting eighth, playing second base, number 30, Willie Randolph. Batting ninth, the shortstop, number 11, Fred Stanley. And the pitcher, warming up in the bullpen, Ed Figueroa. And now, the rest of the New York Yankees. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise? Ladies and gentlemen, singing the national anthem tonight 
is musician seaman Robert B. Johnson of the United States Navy. Seaman Johnson has performed as a guest vocalist with symphony orchestras around the world in his travels with the Navy. He will be assisted tonight by Navy musicians Michael Levy and Chester A. King, both on snare drum. Ladies and gentlemen, now to honor America, our national anthem. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes on the bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets were glad the bombs burst king in the air gave proof to the night that our flag was singing of the National Anthem by Seaman Robert B. Johnson, we get ready for baseball at Yankee Stadium. Game number four coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, we now direct your attention to Commissioner Kuhn's box, situated at the home plate side of the Yankee dugout, where the first ceremonial pitch will be thrown out by the longtime voice of the New York Yankees, Mel Allen. Mel Allen, if anyone had ever heard his voice, he could put excitement into just saying hello. Nobody uh, could do it like him, Phil. No way. He is the only one and only voice of the Yankees, and uh, he had it all. You know, I broke in under him, Joe, and uh, a stern taskmaster. And I think that's one reason every time I'd make a mistake, he'd pick it up right on the spot. So I never made it again. He taught you well. My Mel mother Allen. didn't like it. Well, she <laughs> got on me. But. <laughs> there you see Mel Allen with Commissioner Bowie Kuhn. Mel, longtime voice of the Yankees, still considered by many the voice of the Yankees. Thrown out the ceremonial first pitch as we get ready for game four here. The umpires for tonight's game. Bill Deegan will be behind the plate from the American League. Bruce Fremming, a happy little guy, looks like Spanky. First base, <laughs> second base, Davey Phillips. Lee Wire will be at third base. Lou DeMuro, left field line. And Billy Williams will be in right field. DeMuro and Billy Williams from Brooklyn, New York. Bill Deegan, born in Camden, New Jersey. Fremmy, Milwaukee. Davey Phillips from St. Louis, Missouri. Lee Wire, Imlay City, Michigan. Boy, they have really spread around, though. Wire's in Decatur, Georgia. Demuro lives in Tucson. Billy Williams, Belmore, New Jersey. Deegan's in California. Fremmy in Brown Deer, Wisconsin. And Davey Phillips, Lake St. Louis. There's Figueroa, who'll be the starting pitcher for the Yankees. Figueroa, the top winner for the Yankees this year, might have been the most consistent pitcher all year long. A lot of people ask Billy Martin, why not Holtzman? Why not coming back with Hunter? Well, 
We asked Billy Martin why he is starting for this important fourth game. The man on the mound right now in that quadrant, Ed Figueroa. Number one, because he deserves to start in the World Series because he's one of my best pitchers on my staff. If I have to go to the whole bullpen tonight, I will. But Figueroa has done a great job for me, and I'm very proud of him. It was a word he used there that I liked. He deserved to start. He really did, Joe. And I tell you, he had a lot of pressure on him. The last two games of the regular season, they televised back to Puerto Rico, and he would have been the first Puerto Rican to have won 20 games in the big league. And Tony, he tried too hard. You know mm -hmm. what happens when you try too mm -hmm. hard. The slider doesn't slide, and the curve doesn't break. So I think he's about due in his last four starts he hasn't won. So I think the uh, averages are in his favor. He last pitched on October 13th. That's the fifth game of the playoffs. He allowed four runs, eight hits, and seven innings. He also started the second game of the playoffs. He lost seven to two. How about that? <laughs> Little Hex. We're trying to go. Is that a chicken? A rooster? A little voodoo. <laughs> Somebody threw a rooster off from behind <laughs> the Reds dugout. <laughs> In game four is Pete Rose. Pete is. Leading it up. Ready to go. Did he butt? No, says third base umpire. Lee Wire. Rose is two for 11. Down the left field line, a fair ball. This will be extra bases. Two base hit, ground rule double. That was two base hit all the way for Rose. And I was just going to say, Joe, the Yankees have kept Rose and Griffey off the bases early in the ball game, and they were the men that were supposed to get on and score a lot of runs. Now they're getting on. So it's going to make it that much tougher for the Yankees. Well, here is Griffey. Heard you talking to Joe before the ball game in the little spot you did, Phil, talking about the great execution, the power, the speed, all those combinations. Here they've got a chance right now to see if Griffey either drags a bunt or pulls the ball to get Pete to third with less than two outs. He's pulled Nettles in the third. <laughs> Looked like he was going to bunt on that one. Is he a pretty good bunter, Tony? Excellent. Nettles is in no man's land, isn't he, guys? He yep. sure has. He comes in too quick. Rose will come down. <laughs> He's got that swing, Phil, with his speed. He chops it in the dirt, and he takes off running. We've seen him beat out balls already in this series. you got to play him shallow, and then he hits it by him. Could be a big play in the ball game as far as the Yankees to pick up their morale. Trying to pull it foul. Power remains a strike two. Front of home plate looks like it's been pretty well soaked with Figueroa pitching, a sinker ball pitcher. If yep. he hits that uh, artificial surface swing, he's liable to get some grub worms there. It's pretty <laughs> soft. Strike pitch. One ball, two strikes. There's nothing wrong with it. A groundskeeper can help you. If you have a sinker ball pitcher, obviously he's going to pitch low, a lot of ground balls, so you slow it up. You slow the ball up to two or three feet in front of home plate. So what you do is just wet it down a little bit. Got a ball club you can bunt. Just put an extra coat on the foul line to hold the ball in. Bouncing ball, Rose is going to go to third. They got a shot. They got him trapped, and now he's motioning for Griffey to move over. They may have a Number double two. play. <laughs> Misty, but he's out. Out of the baseline. Says oh. the second base umpire, Davy Phillips. And now so the Cincinnati Reds, for the first time this series, pulled the rock. There Let's it look is. Look at it again. Not too good a base running by Pete Rose. Stanley very alertly gets the runner. Now they do the right thing as opposed to the other day. Look at Pete signaling for Griffey to come over. That's it. One throw, they got him, and they've got Griffey hung up. You know, now he's, nobody went over to cover first base had he gone back. 
got three feet from the line of the tag there, and he went farther than that. Phillips called him out. Yeah, I tell you, that could pick the Yankees up for the first time in the series. Here is Joe Morgan. Strike one. I tell you, that looked like a fire drill on a rainy day. Everybody was moving. If you score, that play went six, five, three, four. Rose was trying to coach Griffey to come on over there. The Nettles made the play perfectly. As Tony pointed out one tag and then they got Griffey. One ball and one strike. Phil Figueroa, the hardest throw on your staff. Starting yes. pitchers. Oh yes, absolutely. This year, Catfish was last year, but he didn't have, you know, he had trouble with his arm this year, a little tendonitis. Two balls, one strike, two outs, nobody on. Ball game just getting started. Campbell surrounds it. Takes it himself, and the inning is over. So we go to the bottom half of the first. Cincinnati, nothing. Yankees coming to back. There you see Gary Nolan, 15-9 in 1976, a 3.46 earned run average. He was 15 and 9 in 1975. How about his control, Joe? Great control. He's had exceptional control in each of the last two seasons, leading the regular National League starters each year with an average of only 1.2 walks per nine innings. Even better average in 1976. Only 27 base on balls, including three intentional in 239 innings. And here comes Rose in again, moving in closer. He's closer than ever. He really is. Every ball game he's moved a little, another step or two in on Rivers. Let's see if Rivers tries to peck it by him or goes to swing like he should. Look at that. He's right in on top of him. Foul balls. Oh, Upper deck. Maybe Billy Martin had a little talk with Rivers. Rivers can whip the bat like that. I tell you, that Forster's playing very shallow and left. Nick has hit many balls one hop off that left field wall. He's opened his stance, Phil. Yes, he has. He's facing the pitcher more than he was the other games. Third ball misses. One ball, one strike. If Pete Rose gets any closer, he'll have to put pinstripes on. <laughs> Two balls and one strike. I'll tell you something. Watching him play that close, you either have to have a lot of confidence or a good insurance man. <laughs> Look at him. No way a line drive that he can protect himself if it's right at him. Popped up. Pete Rose and Concepcion. Now Concepcion takes charge. One out. This telecast is authorized under television rights granted by Major League Baseball solely for the entertainment of our audience in any publication, reproduction, retransmission for commercial or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. Here's Roy White. He's two for ten. Joe Morgan bobbles it in time. Two up, two down. That statistic we showed you earlier really tells a story. As a team, the Yankees are hitting 222, the Cincinnati Reds 327. Thurman Munson. Munson is 5 for 13. He has five hits. Chambliss has four. Two leading hitters. No score, bottom of the first. Munson almost needs a building permit when he goes in there, doesn't he? <laughs> Spilled like a fire plug, that's for sure. You know, Tony, that was interesting what he said, and I heard him on the uh, interviews they had about being embarrassed, not wanting to be embarrassed. One ball, one strike. Thurman Munson. Gary Nolan. 
Some consider Nolan the best pitcher on this staff. He has an excellent straight change curveball, and the kind of guy when you start looking for it, he throws the fastball right by you. Two balls and a strike to count. One thing he's got, Phil, you've seen it around this park a long time. He can keep the ball away from you, whether you're right or left-handed hitter, make you hit to the big part of the ballpark. That's part of Nolan's success. He had a lot of home runs off him, but because he doesn't walk many, they don't usually cost him ball games. Out of play. Two balls, two strikes. Well, one thing you know, if he pitches Munson out there, he'll go with it. Billy Martin. Flatten him up over the winter. He's Phil, I saw him. I started saying the clubhouse. He was going into the sauna. Boy, he looks like he could use a trip to summer camp. <laughs> he is really thin. He is really down. And he lost all that weight winning. Uh -huh. Off the handle, it may drop in there. Morgan gives it a chase. It's a base hit for Munson. A oh, blooper for Munson. Well, the Yankees have been talking about all the bloopers the Reds have been getting off him, so... They dunk one in there. Did you see what Morgan said about that, though? He said, yeah, we've been hitting those 370 foot bloopers. <laughs> <laughs> Here is Shambliss. Shambliss, four for 12 in this series. No score, bottom of the first. Ball one. The Yankees have been looking for somebody to pop one early to get them out ahead in one of these ball games. Keep their pitchers a little break. Not so much pressure on their defense either. That's a base hit, left center field. Munson is rounding second. He's digging hard. They're going to try to score him. Here comes the throw. One nothing, New York. Tell you, this is a different ball game. This is the way the Yankees played all year. You get a chance right now to see Munson, a terrific break he gets off first base. He didn't need a coach on this. Right now, he picks up his coach, Dick Hauser. Geronimo, in spite of his strong arm, did not give Davey Concepcion a good relay throw. It was a hopper to him. Here comes Geronimo's throw. Look at that. Geronimo's arm's usually stronger than that. A little bit offline setting up on that cutoff play. They took the indirect route, Phil. Yep. Good hustle by Thurman. The Yankees, for the first time in this series, have taken the lead one to nothing. Chambliss is on at second with the double, and Carlos May is the batter. May is 0 for 6. Dick Hauser, the third base coach, really had him coming all the way. Munson, able to score from first. Not many catchers can do that. This crowd looking for something to root about. They got it. Early. Up the middle. Concepcion, a fine play to throw in time. What a play. Saved the run, took a base hit away. Dave Concepcion. So at the end of an inning, it's New York 1, Cincinnati nothing. Once again, as other times this series, we see a great defensive play by a Cincinnati Red, this time Concepcion, to save another run. I don't know who could have done that other than that guy. Tony Kubek's the only other guy. No, wrong. I couldn't. That That's guy unbelievable. is so quick and so fast. Strike one to Tony Perez. That ball was by him, guys. Boy, I know it. Got a in between hop two, Phil. Bad hop two. Off the handle, Shambles will take it himself, out number one. Now, both of you guys could have made that play. I mean, let's we'll forget the humility. But what I want to ask you is, when a ball like that, do you just, you figure you got a chance, or are you just going to go all out? You got to go all out, because as Tony said, he was playing Carlos May straight away, which made it more unbelievable. And then to get the in-between hop, and you got to have a strong arm to throw him out. One thing you're thinking of also, with a man in scoring position, I've got to at least knock the ball down when he's at second base. Keep the ball from going to the outfield. Oh, further than the play. Save the run. New York leading one to nothing. Dan Dreesen, who is five for 11. Left field, Roy White coming in. 
Two out. That wind is uh, playing tricks with that ball uh, high in the air. Well, the gusts were supposed to be something like 20 to 25 miles an hour. Let's see it with the flags uh, top the Yankees. There's the old facade, Tony. Remember, used to be oh, up yeah. in the upper deck in right field. Is that a reproduction or the original facade taken from somewhere else? Reproduction. Is yeah. it? I hate to say it, but it is. But tradition is still there. <laughs> George Foster. Foster, five for 11. Figueroa is playing games with him now. Foster's driven in three runs. The Reds have scored in uh, first or second inning of every game. Foster's like Munson. He makes all pitches wait, doesn't he? You ought to see Foster and Jim Cott from the Phillies. <laughs> One ball, one strike. I would like to have seen Gibson and Foster. <laughs> yeah, blink your eye and uh, throw that ball. Two balls and a strike. Phil, I was looking at the home runs allowed by Figueroa. He does not give up too many. He's had a history of very few home runs. Does this fastball sink well? He's, he's got a good sinking fastball and that good slider. You look at big Johnny Bench. Three balls and one strike. So you said big Johnny Bench. He's going to do a benefit with Bob Hope. We'll tell you about it a little bit later on, more about it. But he's going to sing Big Bad Leroy Brown. That's oh. his hit song. Now to hear that. Foster outside draws the base on balls. It puts him on and brings up Johnny Bench. Bench six for 11. He was the victim of that great play by Grant Jackson, who told me he did that a lot. No. That's what he said. I started laughing. He said he caught one in the back of his knee off Perez, a line drive, just where his knee bends. He said the ball stuck there. <laughs> Grant Jackson backhanded that ball on him. One nothing, New York leading top of the second inning. Two men out, Foster's at first. out of play. Phil Figueroa looks very deliberate as he lifts his leg up, giving the runners a lot of time, which may make it a bit tough for Munson, who may be going out there now to say, hey, if you're going to lift your leg up that slow, you better back up third. Well, you're absolutely right, Joe. Uh, Thurman has to remind him about that. Uh, very few of the Yankee pitchers can hold runners on, even the left-hand pitchers we have. And it makes it more difficult for Thurman. He's been charged with a lot of errors because he's had to get rid of the ball. You know, as you know, you don't steal on the catcher, you steal on the pitcher. One strike to count. Very close. Mm -hmm. he He's quick the first. He went back in there standing up. the umpire. A couple guys on the bench watching all of this in the dugout at third base, and that's Morgan, Deception, and Griffey. They want to see a few moves over to first base. They want to try and pick something up in the event they get on during this ball game. They don't miss much. There you see Rose and Perez. Gullet into the blanket. Foul out of play. Two strikes on Johnny Bench. Joe, Phil, that was one of the big things. I had a chance to glance briefly at the Cincinnati report, and one of the big things they had was they timed every pitcher on the Yankee staff how quickly he gets rid of the ball on the home plate what his late kick was going home, what was the first movement he made going to first base. And it's the most detailed thing. It goes with six pages on that. That's Evaluating these guys. Yeah. There he goes. Pitch out. They should get him. They got him. Munson pitches out. 
Randolph covering Foster's out. We go to the bottom of the second. New York won Cincinnati nothing as we look at City Hall. A beautiful shot. It's not luck when you pitch out. You have to know something and get a good ball to handle. Munson does. Eye level, and he's in perfect position to get rid of that ball. He was now perfectly watch, balanced. Watch Randolph. Now, the, for a rookie, this kid, right in front of the bag. He's got to tag him before his foot hits the bag. And I tell you, for a rookie, that kid does it all. Good play. Here is Greg Nettles. New York leading one to nothing. We're in the bottom of the second. We took a look at our beautiful shot from the helicopter live Yankee Stadium game four Cincinnati three to nothing game. they trail one to nothing in this game one strike on medals he's one for nine out of play Following the first two pitches to Nettles, uh, throwing changeups as Zachary did to the left handed hitters. I tell you, Nettles kind of lulls you to sleep. He is not a streaky hitter in the sense that he hits in a lot of games in a row, but when he gets hot in one game, he has really helped the Yankees. One ball, two strikes. Geronimo in center field really doesn't play that far over in right center for Nettles. There you see him. swing Nolan Perez one out boy that makes you mad when you do that it's that change what do you throw every pitch a change up seemed like I think he threw four of them one out Oscar Gamble is a batter and we pause briefly for station identification this is the NBC television network Gamble one for four One. Mel Allen, longtime Yankee announcer, threw out the first ball. Joe DiMaggio threw it out last night. DiMaggio in the ballpark tonight, along with the great heavyweight champion Jack Dempsey. Popped up. Pete Rose. The way he slaps at this ball. I didn't have nerve enough to do it. Oh, that's scare me. <laughs> Two outs. And it brings up Willie Randolph. Randolph is one for ten. Joe, this kid had a great shot of being the rookie of the year. Then he was hurt three different times. And they got, Munson says they got to toughen him up. Shallow center field, Geronimo coming in and makes the play. He thought that ball was hit much harder. That ends the inning at the end of two full innings. New York won, Cincinnati nothing. There you see it. If you've ever been in New York, our helicopter is coming from the south towards Yankee Stadium. Beautiful sight. And here, Johnny Bench. He's closed his stance up. Isn't it something he struggled almost all year long and he finally found that little knack of swinging the bat and timing the pitcher seems to be working for him. And I think that's great when you can adjust, you know, when you're having a bad year and you try something different. Popped up in the infield. Randolph is taking charge. Bench is out. I think he got away with a pitch there. Mm. Brings up Geronimo. Geronimo is two for nine in the series. Reds opened up with a double, and then Griffey 
bounced one to the shortstop Stanley, and in the rundown, they tagged out Rose and Griffey for a double play, and Morgan ended the inning by grounding out. The Yankees scored their run the first, a single by Munson, a double by Shambliss. As Geronimo swings and misses. That's a base hit, left center field. Mickey Rivers cuts it off, stumbles a bit, but Geronimo a big turn. The boys get the track shoes out because you know they're gonna be going. That guy right there, Geronimo, originally signed with the Yankees. He was down at Fort Lauderdale, then he was drafted by Houston. How'd they let him get away? Oh, I don't know. Well, it's a good thing he's a strong, silent type, too, because he wouldn't have a chance to give any press conferences with those other guys on that floor. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they really got him over there. They love it. One nothing, New York leading one to third. One man out, and Concepcion takes a good look at Sugar. Conce Geronimo, time, they had a play on, he's just not sure. A little groundskeeping in the first base area. Well, they couldn't have done that too, but that area, could they fail? They certainly could have. Yeah, yeah, they could. I'm not saying they did, but they're trying to hold the speed down. You talked earlier, Joe made a good point about the soft spot in front of home play. That obviously is wet. Ball one. I tell you, you can your groundskeeper is the tenth man in the lineup. It's Boss who's Gene Bossard over at Chicago. If he could put quicksand down or he'd put it down, he'd <laughs> lose two, three infielders during the course of the game. Just can't get the footing. There's a strike. Many different things you can do. You can slope the foul lines. You can put an extra coat on the foul lines. You can let the grass grow high. You can soften in front of the plate. You can soften in front of the uh, first base where they get their leads. A million things you can do. He's got a big lead. Two balls and one strike. If I had to pick a pitch, I'd pick it right here. Got to say he's gone. Munson, gutsy call for a pitch well, out. Yeah. Munson's in the box. He can't call a pitch out. There he goes. Here's the throw. Not in time. Boy, I tell you, you sit back there sometimes and you're dying. You know the guy's going. You can't do anything about it. It's an excellent yeah. job. Figueroa never gave Munson a chance. Stanley was covering this time, thinking Davey was going the opposite way. He beat the pitcher that time, Phil. Oh, absolutely. That's, as Joe mentioned, Figueroa lifts that leg up and hesitates. And Munson had to get rid of it too quickly. I think a real good throw would have gotten him, Tony. Could have been close. But when you have to get rid of it so fast, uh -huh. you got to give up accuracy. You throw it in hope. That's a six steal for the Reds. Nine attempts. One man out. Three and one to count. Out of play. Would you have ever pitched out in a situation like that? Only know? if the manager would let me and tell me. I would look over and, and ask him, can I pitch out? Because I tell you, if he doesn't run and the pitcher loses the game, he'll blame it on uh -huh. that pitch out. But you threw his rhythm off and all that. <laughs> the worst thing you can do is call a pitch out. The only guy I give you a lot of back, and he's listening tonight, is Jerosha. Jerosha was good to catch us. You need a lot of support from the manager when you call a pitch out two balls in the strike. Does Billy call most of them on this ball club? Yes, he does. he does. A lot of managers, when you look over there, they're at the water cooler. Uh -huh. <laughs> Not Billy. <laughs> no, he's in every pitch. There you see Billy Martin on the Yankee bench. Cincinnati with a threat. Geronimo is on at second. Sparky Anderson. Joe Morgan. Pete Rose, who doubled his first time up. One man out. Right. Bouncing ball, shambles wide. He'll go to second. Throw to third. Close. Nice play by Stanley. So that puts Geronimo at third. Rose at first. 
Here it is again, Phil, and I got to ask you, did you ever get a guy at third base on this play? I tried it several times, never could get somebody. Yeah, I got a couple of guys, Tony, but uh, they were taking that big turn, which you have to do. You know, that was a good play by Chambliss, too. I didn't think he was going to go with that runner going, and a big lead Concepcion had at first base. Two men out. Geronimo is at third. Rose is at first. New York leading one to nothing when the top of the third. Ken Griffey the batter. Good sinker. You saw it that time. Strike one. It amazes me this guy's such a good hitter and he's a stiff arm swinger. His hitting instructor and the Reds instructor, Kozuski, thinks that someday it's, he's got speed. We know that he might hit 20, 25 home runs. That's how strong he is. Up the middle, off the glove. Randolph will have to make the play to first. It is in time. What a play he made. One, four, three if you're scoring. I didn't think they could get Griffey, but they did. Bottom of the third, one nothing, New York. Willie Randolph had to do everything right on this play. The ball was stopped from going into center field by Figueroa. Then Rose blocked his view. He had to feel the ball cleanly, get rid of it quickly and accurately, and he did all of them, Phil. Beautifully executed. Saved the run. Brett Stanley leads it off. Ball one. Nolan has only pitched twice in the last three and a half weeks. Worked nine innings October 1st and five and two-thirds on the 12th. Trailing by a run. Ball two. He doesn't walk many, as we pointed out. Exceptional control. And one walk for nine innings in 1976. Ball three. Well, if anybody can get a Stanley, he's a very patient hitter. It's like Roy White, Tony. Base on balls. Larry Shepard, the pitching coach. Front with the glasses. Sparky Anderson behind him. Gotta wonder now, Phil, with Rivers not hitting and maybe Billy going for an insurance run, you never know. He may have Rivers sacrificing. It's still it's early, but Rivers hadn't done much for him offensively so far. I wouldn't be surprised. You have to bunt for me. How about you? Oh, yes, absolutely. Although Mickey's tough to double. I think only once all year he's hit into a double play on the ground. Strike one. Well, there's a tough play for a base runner. And the guy tries to bunt that way. Alan Roth points out that during the season, Rivers had only two sacrifice bunts. He doesn't bunt to sacrifice. He tries to beat him out. Up. Foster in left field taking charge. Comes in and makes the play. So there's one away. Stanley's at first. One nothing, New York leading. Bottom of the third, Roy White the batter. White bounced out. Morgan to Perez back in the first inning. Two for 11 in the series. I'd like to see Billy start a couple base runners here, Phil. Maybe pick an opening in the infield, get somebody covering. White can handle the bat well. He's got Stanley down there with fair speed. That's right, and Roy doesn't strike out much. That's how the Yankees won the pennant, really, running the first uh, three quarters of the season. You know Nolan's going to be around the plate. He rarely walks anybody. It should be near the strike zone. Strike one. Fastball on the outside corner. Gary Nolan. Stanley at first. One man out. One ball, one strike. Dick Hauser coaches at third. He gets his signs from Billy Martin. 
Elston Howard coaches at first. Deep to right center field. Geronimo and Griffey, they got room. Griffey makes the play on the warning track. Two outs. Just made him reach for the ball a little bit, didn't he? The ball may have tailed away, and he just had to flick at it at the end. Here is Thurman Munson. Munson single the right his first time up. Came around to score when Shambliss doubled in the left field. That's been all the scoring so far. We're in the bottom half of the third inning. Six for 14. Munson now has a 13 game hitting streak. He hit in the last four games of the regular season and nine postseason games. Looking at the box scores or my scorecards of the previous three games, they've given him very little to pull. He has been away, but hitting yep. center field and mostly right field, keeping it away on him. When they go inside, they waste it inside out of the strike zone. One ball, one strike, two outs. Ball misses. Two balls in the strike. New York won. Cincinnati nothing. Bottom of the third. Stanley, a lead at first. Line drive, base hit, right field. Stanley is rounding second. He's going to hold up. Munson, another base hit, two for two tonight. Fred Potek, in the first show we did on the baseball world, said, with men on bases, he just goes to right field. He's a tough man. And sure enough, you put somebody on base, he just lines that ball to right field. That's right. Just as Tony said, they pitch him out there, and Munson is a smart hitter. Here is Shambliss, who doubled to drive in the Yankee run. Five for 13 in this World Series. He's got a hitting streak. Seventeen game hitting streak, Phil. There's a the strike. Let's not cheat him, Joe. Look, tonight he's got an eighteen game hitting streak. What a tell! What a tell! He teaches another how to add, right? <laughs> he always was a better counter. <laughs> Oh, he had a good cut, but he fouls it off. Strike two. You know, the amazing thing about Mr. Rizzuto, he does have a memory, the son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> they got it all right up there. Uh, he does. <laughs> you look at his scorecard. G-O, F-O, <laughs> W-L, which means wasn't looking. <laughs> it's amazing. He does it from memory. Right, an 18-game hitting streak. Nolan taking a little bit of time out there. one nothing. New York leading bottom of the third. Two outs. Stanley's at second. Munson's at first. Joe Morgan bobbles oh. the ball. Everybody's safe. Throw the third. Oh, and heavy. No, no, no. Just did get back. Morgan bobbles it, and he laid back and got caught. The ball played him. Absolutely, Joe. Tony mentioned that. He said he's not used to this. The extra turf, you get the good bounces. Kyle Keel's one of the guys, as we watch this replay, who said he saw them in San Francisco on dirt surfaces. They're not as good a feeling team. He said they get into artificial surface habits. You can wait back on the ball because it gets to you more quickly. You do it on this, you get those funny in-between hops. So the bases are loaded. Two men out. Carlos May. Ball one. Stanley's at third. Munson is at second. Chambliss is at first. The Yankees have had situations similar to this before in this World Series. They haven't been able to get that big base hit with minutes scoring position with two outs to keep a rally going. Two. 
Carlos May, crowd really whooping it up. May was robbed of a base hit by Concepcion in the first inning and saved the run. He's looking for his first base hit in this World Series. Right. Bases are loaded. Two men out. Bullpen started for Cincinnati. Makes the play, and that ends the inning. So as we complete three innings, New York won. As we look at Carnegie Hall, Cincinnati nothing. As we look live at a beautiful site, Empire State Building, right smack dab in the middle of beautiful New York. Bring you the local boy, the scooter, Phil Rizzuto. Yep, pretty soon we'll be seeing King Kong again up on the Empire State Building. They're bringing that movie back. Smearing it with bananas, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's Joe Morgan ready to lead off. Joe bounced out to first his first time up. And the Yankees know they got to keep this man off the bases. One nothing, the Yankees lead. Like one. Balls in a strike. Three and one. Can you see that shot right there of how well he controls the strike zone? I, I know I've said it before, but Cecil Upshaw has the best description. His eyeballs are just not that far from the ball, even on the low pitch. He can really control it. He's, he's so compact. That is a great shot when you get this close up and see uh, Joe's eyes. Here he looks him over. Yep, he's on, and now the Yankees. Tell you, this guy upsets the whole infield. You know, Tony, when he used to get a fast man on first. You cheat a little bit more at second base or shortstop, get a little bit closer to the bag. It opens up a hole. Third baseman comes in on occasion. He's doing a little grounds work down there. He's marking off his spot, kicking away some soft dirt at first base. He measures that lead, Phil. I've never seen anybody like him. I know. Well, 13 feet off a right-hander, 15 feet off a left-hander, almost to the inch. He's got to do that. Maybe quick pitch once in a while with Tony Perez. Uh, Perez bounced to first his first time up. Yanks lead one nothing. Top of the fourth. Nobody up. Line to left center. Rivers though is going to get it. And Morgan will look at the long throw by Mickey. That's the best. Almost over the head of Chandler. That's the best throw Rivers has made all year. Morgan at first base, when he takes his lead, he just looks at the pitcher and very defiantly, and he says, here's the throw of Rivers. Even he uncorked it. Just to finish up, uh, Morgan always says, some pitchers give him trouble, but nobody can stop him. Uh -huh. Oh, looked like Munson wanted to pitch out there, didn't it? Got he it. it out. A little low for a pitch out. Dreesen fly to left field his first time. And Morgan, if he's going to steal, will steal with that left-hand batter up there. There he goes. And Munson doesn't even throw, and it's a good thing he didn't. What a jump he had. He had about four steps, and Figueroa still had the ball. Right. You know, every... Morgan says he does it on quickness. There it is. Oh, look at Two. this. 
three, four. He had four steps and Figueroa had the ball. He does it with a quick start. He says he doesn't have the speed once he gets going like Brock or Cedeno, but he's got to get a good quick jump. All right, Morgan's two for two, and there's a pop-up, and Thurman Munson. He's one of the best on these. And Thurman's got it two away. And Morgan, two out of two in stolen bases, but there are two out now. George Foster, who walked and was caught stealing in the second inning. Very seldom see George smile, but he's smiling now. Tell me, this guy's really built. Power, speed, he's about the most low-key guy you'll ever meet. All one. 30-inch waist. Oh, it's like Charlie Keller. I think I was in the fourth grade the last time I had a 30-inch waist. <laughs> <laughs> Line, base hit to left field, and Morgan will score. It's a tie ball game. White will not even throw to the plate and forced to hit that so hard. Stanley thought he was going to get it. Look at Stanley. Hands on his hips. It just took off. Another instance of the speed of this ball club. White doesn't even try, so they've cut off a run defensively when Concepcion made a good play. And now with the speed on the stolen base and the good jump off second base by Morgan, they tie it up. Well, at Forster's fourth RBI of the series, you can see why he led the National League and runs batted in. Well, that was a great shot we had on the replay because you saw it come off the bat and you saw how just how close Stanley came. Yep, game of inches. So it's all tied at 1-1, and Johnny benched the batter. Johnny popped to second base his first time up. Ball run. Well, Joe Morgan stole a run there with the help of the base hit by Foster. It's got to be frustrating to a catcher, Joe, like Munson, when a guy like that gets a break. Just wish he had a police whistle and pull him over and check his driver's license. Don't wait, gonna stop him. One on one. Each team with one run and each team with three base hits. Oh, that's gone if it's fair. Hit the screen for a home run. Johnny Bench has just put the Reds out in front, three to one. And Figueroa got that ball where I thought was a good spot up and in. And as Tony said, Bench's new style of aiming that bat at the pitcher, he timed it beautifully. I don't know if that was a fastball or a breaking ball. It looked like he was trying to get it in, Phil, but it didn't look like it had a lot of stuff on it like previous fastballs. It may have even been a hanging slider. There's that big, tall foul pole, both corners in Yankee Stadium. A lot of arguments before they put those up. Geronimo singled and stole a base. Oh, well, quickly the Reds are out in front, three to one. One of mine. Ball, two strikes. Kerry Grant. Grant show and Kerry Grant, gray-haired gentleman. Look very serious there. In the hole, I don't know whether Stanley will get him. He's going to get him a good play by the chicken, Fred Stanley. Three runs for the Reds, and now at the end of three and a half, at Cincinnati three, the Yankees one. CTV, a two-hour special. Featuring the best of the comedy sketches from the past quarter century, Jack Benny, George Burns. And Sunday night, you fans in Cincinnati will see Johnny Bench sing Bad Boy Leroy Brown, Pearl Bailey, Roy Clark. Hope. Oh. All right, Nettles grounds one to right center field. Morgan overshifted on him. So Nettles bounces right back with the Yankees trailing 3-1. to one. 
Greg at first base. That's the fourth hit for the Yankees. And now Oscar Gamble. The Reds lead three to one. 27 years of jokes. Oh, and he gets better every time. He's something. Got the greatest monologue I've ever heard. And look at Oscar Gamble. By the way, uh, Joe and Tony, myself, Harry Coyle, Roy Hammerman, all want to say hello to Jack Murphy. Yankee uh, television director for so many years for Yankee games right here at Yankee Stadium watching the game down in flop. Swing and a miss by Oscar. Gamble popped the third his first time up. Nobody out in the bottom of the fourth as the Yankees try to get back in the ball game. Bouncer. And Perez goes to second, and he drops hey. the ball. Everybody's safe, and this is something we haven't seen the Reds do all series. That's the second error in this ball game, and one by Morgan, one by Concepcion. Perez threw the ball across the path of the base runner, Nettles. Watch this. It may have blocked Davies' view, one of those sinkers. He gave the target inside, and then he might have lost it. The ball came over the shoulder of Nettles. I think when Nettles throws his arms up, Tony, watch like this. this. Right there. He blocked it. Once that runner gets between you, boys, like that throw from the outfield, it's tough. That's a great shot. All so right. Except you know he's up against. Now Willie Randolph. Let's see if Billy Martin has them bunting here. Nobody out. Willie, an excellent bunter. He tried to center his first time up. Nope. Hit him away on that pitch. It's low ball one. Rose is not in at third. He's barely in on the infield grass. There's Pete. Concepcion and Morgan have shortened up. Nobody out. On one. Gary Nolan. Barbone and Billingham. Billingham is the man closest to him. Look oh, they got Nettles picked off. And got hey. him at third base, and for some reason, Nettles did not slide. I think he would have been safe if he just slid. You're right, Phil. If he had gotten down, Pete Rose was standing straight up. He may have had a chance. This is a tough play when you're trying to get a good jump off second base. The guy either bunts through it. Good play by Davey also. I don't think he'd have beat it, no, guys. He that ball was there. Pete was, was looking to be bowled over, and he was just steadying himself. Pete was ready for a third and two play. Right. Yep. Willie Randolph having his problems. Two for 17 in the playoffs and one for 11 in the series. And they call that pitch a strike, so there's one out. Right three. That ball had to just nip the corner. And Randolph called out, and uh, quickly there are two outs now. Breaking ball. Here it is. Mm. Where he caught it, it wasn't a strike, but where it crossed the plate, it probably was. Last two innings, for the first time in the series, Cincinnati's given some things to the Yankees. They haven't taken advantage of it. Nope. Fred Stanley, who walked, takes a ball. If they put a string on every gift, they give it to you and they take it away. They give you an air, zip, they pick you off. Well, they give you an air last night, Zachary picks Rivers off. They got every gift tied onto a string. It's a right field, but right there is Griffey and makes the catch. So nothing across, and at the end of four innings, it's the Reds three, the Yankees one. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. <laughs> I never saw one like that. Very <laughs> good field hates beat Rose. <laughs> to say it loves him. Concepcion wants Deegan to look at the umpire at the ball on deck Pete Rose Concepcion walked his first time up Three to one the Reds are leading here in the top of the fifth first three games the Yankees didn't get any breaks here they've had two or three breaks but haven't been able to take advantage of it Bouncer. And Nettles throws him out. One away. That might have been tough in Cincinnati. That ball might have bounced over his head, Tony. Mm -hmm.
Pete has doubled a left and bounced into a force play. field there at the stadium but Roy plays it very well and now Ken Griffey bounced into a very unusual double play as we look at that big left field area out there that Roy has to cover and then was thrown out on a good play smash off Figueroa's glove and Randolph threw him out strike one Handle Griffey very well, just one hit so far. Oh, back in the crowd. Oh, and two. There's just no rest for a pitcher, is there? For this nope. ball club. With the DH, nine hitters, nine runners. Yeah, look like. Oh, and two. The change up back into the crowd. Last inning looked like Figueroa was out of the jam. Morgan on second and two out. Single and a homer. And the Reds are out in front three to one. Just got a piece of it. Two out, nobody on. Nettles makes the catch. So they're down in order, and now at the end of four and a half, it's the Reds three and the Yankees one. Well, you see Robert L. Housen, the President of the Cincinnati Reds. Next to him is Mr. Lewis Nippert, who is chairman. I'll say one thing for old Bob. The weatherman said it was 51 degrees. You couldn't prove it by him. <laughs> All right, Mickey Rivers to lead it off. Mick is popped to short, fly to left. Cincinnati gave the Yankees two big breaks in the third and fourth inning. Oh, he fooled them on that change. It's unbelievable that Rose can take that bat away from Rivers the way he's done this whole series. Gonna have to put blinkers on Mickey. <laughs> he doesn't look at Rose. <laughs> Try to slap that by him and it was in on him. He's just made him change his hitting style completely. Yep. Him. Just forced him in it, psyched him out. Yeah, Pete's left and he knows it. He's gotten away with it for the whole series. Still 0 and 2. They know Rivers swings at a lot of bad pitches. In the scouting report, they said, throw him some change ups, make sure they're bad pitches. He'll go after almost anything near the strike zone. And this kid could hit 340, 350 if he laid off bad pitches. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's a little looper that's going to drop in. How do you like that? Tell you, the Yankees getting every break imaginable tonight, but they've got to take advantage of it sooner or later. Have had three bloopers tonight. Straight change of pace. Rivers fooled, but he had enough left to just dink it out in right center field, or right field. All right, Roy White has bounced to second and fly to right. See the great year he had batting left handed, hit 320. Right handed, he had an off year. A natural right-handed hitter. 
And I asked him about switching. He said, all the kids in our neighborhood switch in. He said it was the thing to do. We played Ted Williams one day, Joe DiMaggio the next day. That must have been a tough lineup. <laughs> Trevor's back. Speaking of switch hitters, it's Mickey Mantle. It was 45 on Wednesday, and Whitey Ford, 48 today. One ball on Roy White. Nobody out. Reds lead three to one here in the bottom of the fifth. One to one. I don't think Nolan throws anything down the heart of the plate. Quite a story, Phil. A couple of years ago, they thought he might never pitch again. Something troubling his right shoulder. They say every ball game the last year and a half, he's gotten a little bit faster. During the year, Mickey would steal. Billy would let him steal, even though the Yankees were behind. Nope. Right to George Foster in shallow left. One man out. Well, yeah, that'll bring up Thurman Munson. I tell you, he is a, he and Chambliss have uh, been doing it all for the Yankees in this series. Two for two in this game. I scored the Yankees' only run. I was back in the first inning. Thurman was really great. They interviewed him for about 45 minutes. Reporters throwing all kinds of questions at him. One man out. this let's watch Mickey no with a high knee kick I don't know who can run faster than this guy once he gets in full gear bench made a perfect throw but he just outran the ball yep where he comes right at you this is what you'd see if you're taking the throw down at second base with that first shot that we had you could count the steps and you can't give the guy four steps and still hold the ball and throw him out even nope. Johnny Bench can't do that and that was the first Yankee steal of the series. One and one in a month now. I believe that breaks Johnny Bench's uh, streak of throwing uh, men out in playoffs and World Series. First steal in 26 consecutive games. Postseason game. All right, one out. Three to one. The Reds are leading here in the bottom of the fifth. Munson gets another base hit, and Rivers will score. It is three to two, and Munson has, along with Chandler, been the whole Yankee attack. Thurman Munson has got that golden bat and tonight. Joe Morgan fell very mad at himself. He was kicking the dirt. He took a couple of steps to his left, just as the ball was pitched. Gary Noel he got a little too much of the plate. Munson hit it up the middle. Now eight hits, and 16 at bats. There it is, three to two, Cincinnati, and Chris Chambliss who doubled a drive in Munson in the first and reached on an error in the third. One out. A line to left center field, but Foster's right there. Boy, did they play him perfectly. Two out. Looks so sharp tonight, making his seventh World Series start. You look at Pedro Bourbon and Jack Billingham. Nolan is 0-2 in World Series competition. And a very high earning run average, 5.54. By Carlos May. Well, he's hit the ball hard twice. Concepcion robbed him of the base hit, and then he lined a Forster and left with the bases loaded. Munson's a pretty good base runner if Billy wants to turn him loose. Right at Morgan. 
Throws them out, but the Yankees pick up a run on two base hits, and now at the end of five, it's the Reds three, the Yankees two. There's the picture swing of Roger Maris. We hit a 61st home run, October 1st. Red Sox, 1961. The pitcher was Tracy Stallard. As we look at Lee McPhail, American League president on the left, and Hall of Famer, former American League president, Joe Cronin on the right. It's the red bullpen. There are the spear carriers. Bill Plummer, bullpen catcher. All right, here's Joe Morgan. He bounced at first, but then he walked and started the Reds rally in the fourth inning. Strike one. Stole a base. Scored on a two-out single by Foster. Strike two. Joe thought it was outside. <laughs> Missed a ball and two strikes. They're in the top of the six. Reds three, Yankees two. Ed Figueroa. Two and two. Not a throw the fastball by him. On deck, Tony Perez. The glove of Stanley just got a piece of it. Well, there he is again. What are you going to do? Another reason that makes Morgan so great, Phil, is he does not fear hitting with two strikes. Now we're going to his groundskeeping act. He doesn't strike out much for a guy that drove in over 100, hit 27 home runs, strikes out about 40 times a year. He still feels he's got you in the hole when there are two strikes. Yep. Last time he stole second once and didn't even throw the ball. He got such a jump off. Figueroa Perez bounced the first line to center. Look at the split screen. And a bounce to the third. And Nettles has to go to first. That Morgan. Nine out of ten other plays you could get at second. They have demonstrated that peak speed four or five times today on defense and on offense. There's another. They remove the force out. Yep. Possible double play. Dan Treason has fly to left and fouled the Munson. One man out in the top of the sixth. The Reds three and the Yankees two. Good off speed pitch, strike one. Better keep your eye on Morgan. Hello, one on one. Greg Nettles is keeping his eye on him. There is Tidrow and Jackson. Jackson, the left hander. Nettles got his one eye on the hitter, his other watching Joe Morgan. Morgan to keep talking and then take off. Good pitch. All in two strikes. It's a little chilly. Figueroa blowing on his pitching hand. speed pitch. That's all he threw to him and Randolph will make the play two out. Billy Martin coming out to the mound. He might be going with first base open to ask him who do you prefer to pitch to Foster or Bench. Oh what a choice. Uh, <laughs> some choice to make. How about uh, going beyond them. 
maybe Geronimo. <laughs> no, forget that too. <laughs> I think 25 Grant Jackson. What a job he's done for the Yankees. And Billy Martin. What a series that was, Tony. Well, you were in that, weren't you? And he had his 12 hits. No, I missed no? that. No, that was before me. Well, that's right. McDougal was playing short mm -hmm. in that series. What am I talking about? I was playing short in that series. <laughs> 1953. <laughs> I was still around. <laughs> what a memory. All right, Morgan at second. You're bragging about your great mind. <laughs> Time flies by so fast. Foster has walked and single it. Left field a drive and a run. Low ball one. Let's see what Billy Martin told Figueroa. Two men out. Two breaking pitches. Three to two, the Reds lead here in the top of the sixth. That's what Billy told him, all breaking pitches. Sliding gloves on. Oh, that's good for look at Foster. He didn't think that was a strike. Two and two. Spunky Anderson never changes his expression. Billy Martin's been very calm in his tough series. Hey, is that Michael uh, Walkie Talkie? Uh huh. He got him. Strike three. I said to everyone a breaking pitch. Nothing across. And now, at the end of five and a half innings, it's Cincinnati three, the Yankees two. Cookie Lavagetto of the Dodgers as we bring you game four of 1947. Bill Bevins, Lavagetto hits that ball off the right field wall. Eddie makes his scores. Larry gets behind the plate. Look at him almost dusting the plate off. 1947. It broke up the no-hitter, and the Dodgers won the game. A great moment. 1947, game four. What about 1946, game four? So you remember that one. It's on the board here in Yankee Stadium. <laughs> Whitey Kurowski, the slaughter, Joe Garagiola. Uh -huh. Four hits. Look at that, folks. Boy, freeze frame that and keep it up there for a while. <laughs> You know, getting back to that Cookie Lavagetto, there are very few people knew Bevins had a no-hitter because he had walked 11 men in that game. He had like two infielders out there all the time. Yep. Everybody on base. Hey, speaking of saying hello, Joe McCarthy, my first manager in the big leagues, and what a great manager he was yeah. for the Yankees. He's watching the game in Tonawanda, just outside of Buffalo. What a nice man. Hi, Nettles. Has hit to the box single and then was picked off second. Yankees trailed three to two in the bottom of the sixth. All right at Morgan. Oh, look another break for the Yankees. Holy cow, they have had the breaks tonight. And they've only been able to capitalize once on it. Joe charged this one, but he had no chance. Ball took that bad hop. You're right, Phil. They've got to take advantage of it sooner or later if these breaks yep. keep coming. All right. Just a reminder with these breaks that if there is a game five, it'll be 6 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow night. 6 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow night. All right, Nettles at first with a base hit. The Yankees seventh and Gamble pops it up. Morgan near the bag. One hands it for the first out. Well, I 
was wrong. Bill Bevins walked only 10 men in that ball game. Seemed like there were men on base every inning. Here's Willie Randolph. Willie came up in the fourth inning with runners at first and second. Nobody out. Trying to bunt, missed the ball, and that's when Nettles was picked off. Took the Yankees right out of an inning. Willie is fly to center and struck out. Right in the Reds dugout, strike one. We mentioned before the Yankees will Billy Martin will hit and run a lot with Nettles at first and Randolph up. The Yankees have not been doing much running in the ball game. Nettles back. Nice to right, but curving foul back into the seats. One thing, Sparky Anderson really wants a sweep. He's had that bullpen going most of the game. Any sign of trouble, they're going to be in there. Wind may be a factor now, guys. The flags, especially those in left field, really blown out. Stiff. Well, get one up and out. The jet stream. And Really carry one out. Ooh, that bench scares me every time he cuts that on. Ball and two strikes. Center field and Geronimo's there. He can't find the hole. There are two out. And Fred Stanley. Wait a minute. I think Billy's calling him back. Fred Stanley is ready to hit, but Billy Martin is waving him back in. There's Howie Hendricks coming across the outfield. Got to try for the long ball now, Joe. He can reach the seats here. He's primarily a pull hitter. Elrod did a good job for the Yankees filling in behind Munson and uh, Fran Healy. He's had the experience playing with Baltimore in the World Series. He's got to catch his breath. He's been running the long way. Elrod's been about once in this series. Fly to left back on Tuesday night. Maybe the big surprise of the series so far for Cincinnati is the group on the club, the nine or ten men who have the most to prove, Phil and Joe, and that's the pitching staff. They went into today's ball game allowing just two runs in each of the first three games, and they've been maligned. Larry Shepard, their pitching coach, just sits quietly back. He doesn't say a word, but he's built a pretty solid pitching staff. There's Shepard. They don't get as many starts as a lot of teams with 20-game winners, but they're consistent all year long. Yankees used to do that. They always had that 15 and 2 guys, 11 and 1. And Revenue was 20 and 18. Good bullpen, too. Oh, the changeup. Had him out in front, strike one. But you're right, especially the way Anderson yanks him so quickly. Makes you think that the starters aren't doing a good job. Nettles at first, two out. The Reds lead 3 to 2 in the bottom of the sixth. He won't give Elrod a fastball. Two beautiful changeups. 0 oh and 2. Sparky has a method of getting his starting pitchers out as early as he does. He feels that he prevents some sore arms late in the ball game. He brings the fresh guy in. They're tired at seventh, eighth, and ninth. They're more susceptible to bad pitches. The staff stays fresh the whole season. Opt him up, Tony Perez. 
Aldridge flies out. And now at the end of six full innings, it's Cincinnati three and the Yankees two. What you see is the trophy that is presented to the winning team. And should Cincinnati win this game, they will be presented with that trophy by the commissioner. And we have our cameras set up. We'll be covering the celebration. And should the Yankees win, we'll be right back here, 6 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow night. All kinds of ifs. Jim Mason is a new shortstop. If there's a game Saturday, you got baseball, football doubleheader. No, tennis, Sunday, it's baseball, football. Here is Johnny Bench. Seven for 13. A two-run homer in the fourth. Popped up. Randolph is going out. Gamble is coming in. Gamble. Slips, staggers, makes the play. Boy, he looked like he didn't have all his tickets for the dance floor at that time. He really stumbled. Watch There's him slip. some soft spots with that all-night rain or all-day rain yesterday. Doing infield practice. Uh, some balls hit by uh, hit to the outfield that just stuck in the mud. One out, and Geronimo is a batter. Geronimo single and stole a base in the third inning. Bounced out, short to first in the fourth. Three for 11 in the series. Strike one. Cincinnati three, New York two, we're in the top of the seventh inning. A three, uh, two run homer by Johnny Bench, the big blow. Munson's been the big hitter for the Yankees. He is three for three. Strike. Figueroa, three runs, five hits, two errors. That's a line score. For Cincinnati, 2 7 0 for the Yankees. Figueroa's done a good job. Caught him looking. Second strikeout. No doubt about it. Geronimo knew it. And that brings up Dave Concepcion. He walked in the third inning. And bounced out third to first in the fifth. Three for 12 in this World Series. Dave Concepcion. It's a strike. Bill Deegan behind the plate. It's his first World Series. So there have been very few argued calls in the first four games. It's been a well umpired game. No discussion at all on plays on the bases. We've had several close ones. Final time. Base hit. He just reached out for it. And it's a base hit. There's a case of a guy hitting a good pitch. Many times, it almost always bugs you. When a guy gets hit, they say it was a hanging curveball. That was in a good spot. Watching. Munson motioning. He wanted the ball a little bit lower, probably. Not belt high. He did fool. He had his tailgate flying. So Concepcion is on, and it brings up Pete Rose, and obviously a base-stealing threat. Davey gets a good lead at first. They've been able to, able to get a four-step jump. Concepcion's one for one stolen bases in the series. 21 for 31 during the regular season. He doesn't have the lead that Morgan had down there earlier when he stole. Maybe two strides shorter. But he's getting back standing up. And he knows he can go a little bit farther. And he makes him dive. Strike. Different players have different ways of measuring. I remember Ken Boyer, as we look at Pete Rose, used to always say he'd get a lead that if he fell, he'd be a body's length and arm away. Step in the dive. That's what Morgan and Concepcion Step in the dive. About. One strike. Pete Rose takes a good look at Sugar. 
and he's just a little bit busier this time. I'd have to take a look. Here's where I gamble a pitch out, Phil. All right. See what happens. What a beautiful shot as our helicopter and our cameraman have been getting great shots all night. You're looking at Times Square. New Year's Eve. The music of Guy Lombardo, and here it is tonight. As we go to the bottom of the seventh, game four. It'll be Rivers, White, and Munson for the New York Yankees. Cincinnati three, New York two. Phil with Rose playing Rivers so close the entire series, he may take the bun away from down in that area, but does he ever drag in the direction of the second baseman? And beat yeah, the I don't understand it. the first baseman to feel the ball and beat the pitcher to the Nope, bag. I haven't seen him do it once all year. Well, he had to learn that. He I know he's taking some funny lessons from you in spring training. Mickey Rivers popped him shortstop in the first, fly the left in the third, single, stole a base and scored in the fifth. Rose comes in. You almost want to describe it as a three-man line. No. Strike. One strike on Mickey Rivers. Cincinnati bullpen busy. strike. Gary Nolan has gone all the way. He's allowed the Yankees two runs, seven hits. Figueroa, three runs, six hits. Popped up. Behind the plate comes Johnny Bench and reaches into the stands, almost makes the play. He really hit that hard. He about made that play. He, had, he knew exactly where that wall was. Now watch once he get there, really reach in there. He's into the second row. With that glove, it's almost like a first baseman's mitt. One ball, two strikes. Look at the umpire pursuing the play to see if there was going to be fat interference or see if he caught it cleanly. Good hustle by Deegan. What a try by Bench. He had a great catch in that guy's ear. Yeah. One ball, two strikes. Fly ball, left center field. Geronimo going over, so is Foster. Foster makes the play. Rivers is out. Bullpen keeps going for Cincinnati. Billingham, number 43, McEnany now, the left-hander, has replaced Pedro Borbon. Sparky knows the value of a short left-handed relief man in this park. Roy White bounced second to first in the first inning, flag to right and third, flag to left in the fifth. Ball one. Cincinnati three, New York two, bottom of the seventh. One out, nobody on. Ball two. Herman Munson, the on-deck batter, he is three for three. He has scored a run, he has driven in a run. Two strikes, one out. Cincinnati three, New York two, bottom of the seventh. Yeah. 
Shallow center field. Geronimo coming hard, coming hard. Makes the play. Two outs, and here is Thurman Munson. Should get a nice hand from this crowd. Munson single and scored in the first inning. Scored from first on a double by Shambliss. Singled in the third inning and drove in a run in the fifth. And he singled the center field to drive in Mickey Rivers. The two catchers have had a bunch of hits between them. Munson's got eight. Bench got seven. Munson has five consecutive hits. The series record is six. Goose Goslin did it in 1924 for the Washington Senators against Pittsburgh. Did it over three games, 1-4-1. One, one. Big time at bat for Thurman. Quick strikes. It's the first time he's tried to pull the ball. Nobody on base. Yep. He's Nolan going now. Yeah. Excuse me, Phil. Mm -hmm. He's getting that change up for breaking ball a little bit more inside part of the plate. If you're wondering why the pitchers are walking around a lot, they're blowing in their hands, and I don't know who, in, who started the rule, but you can't do it on the mound. You must do it off the mound. You know, I guess good housekeeping did that. Well, I could never understand that rule. What's the difference with the way you do it? <laughs> Yogi Berra, Billy Martin, Gene Monahan, the trainer. Sparky Anderson. Gary Nolan walks around the mound, leading by a run, Cincinnati. Three to two, bottom of the seventh. The two catchers are leading in hits. Munson has eight, Bench has seven. One ball, two strikes. He's got to be considered one of the best hitters in the American League with two strikes on him, Thurman Munson. He does protect the plate. He's got that ability to fight off pitches high and tight. Line foul like that. Fight him off, hit him foul, foul him back, and then they get one over the plate and he can drill it to right field as he has so often in this series. See where Gary Nolan is? That's okay. But if he does that, the mound, it's a ball. Up the middle, a base hit. Hyde Munson is just tied. Goose Goslin, he's got his fourth base hit of the night. And he joins 120 other guys, I guess, with four hits in the game. Munson continues his tremendous hitting. That's six in a row, right? Sparky's going to go to the left-hander with Chambliss, May, Nettles, and Gamble coming up. He's called, giving the call to McEnany. Well, he goes with the percentages. Oh, well, he that. does. He's a guy that McEnany has been a forgotten man this year. He's pitched poorly. He gave a good relief job earlier. He's coming in again. There you see McEnany. Four hits in the game. 35 times has been done. Munson does it tonight. And there's a break in the action here at New York with the score. Cincinnati 3, New York 2. The house that Ruth built. And with Munson tying a record, when you talk about records at Yankee Stadium, you must talk about the Bambino. There he is. A home run. A familiar scene. Lou Derrick will be at the plate. And boy, he knows what to do when he hits the home runs. There is Lou Gehrig to greet him. How many times that happened? Will McEnany in relief of Nolan, so no National League pitcher has been able to pitch a World Series complete game since Blast of the Pirates in that final game in 71 against the Orioles. 20, 30 games in a row with no complete game. 
Munson, who ties Bruce Gosler with six consecutive hits and joins 35 others in having four hits in a World Series game. There you see him. That list includes really some great names. Joe oh, yeah. Garagiola. Yeah, but some of the good players like Freddie Lindstrom, Max Carey, Mel Ott, Joe Medley, Hank Greenberg, Ripper Collins, Bill Dickey, Stan Hack, Charlie Keller. Wally Moses, Enos Slaughter, Kurowski, Monty Irvin, Vic Woods, Gilliam, Mantle, Wills, Brock, Robinson, Jackson, Staub. Only two guys didn't do it, were you two guys? <laughs> <laughs> we were defense. <laughs> defense. So Munson is on at first. Two men out, and Chris Shambliss is the batter against Will McEnany. 3-2, Cincinnati leading, bottom of the seventh. Didn't mean the swing, bouncing ball to Morgan. That ends the inning. One pitch. McEnany gets the job done at the end of seven. Cincinnati three, New York two. There it is from our helicopter live, Yankee Stadium. And this is the 76th World Series game played at Yankee Stadium. It started in 1923. Top of the eighth. Bright lights of New York. Cincinnati leading three to two. Figueroa has pitched well. He'd like to get that one pitch back that he threw in the fourth inning to bench. The two-run home run got a little inside. There you tell where are the statistics on Figueroa. Should Cincinnati win, of course, it's all over. Should the Yankees pull it out? We'll be back here tomorrow night, 6 o'clock Eastern time. Pete Rose, he's one for three. He doubled in the first inning. Ball one. Three for 14 in the World Series. Left center field, Mickey Rivers taking charge. Makes the play, and there's one away. Rose flies to Rivers. Brings up Griffey. Griffey is 0 for 3. One for 15 in the series. Top of the eighth, Cincinnati three, New York two. Strike. Figueroa has gone all the way for New York. He's allowed six hits, one a home run, a two-run homer by Johnny Bench in the fourth. Gonna be a tough play for Nettles. They're gonna let it roll. The rolls foul. Good play by Greg Nettles. That's known the home field. Sparky Lyle. You wonder with River speed, they don't tailor those lines in a little bit. Well, he doesn't those put bus. that much as you mentioned, Tony. Even down third. There you see Sparky Lyle in the bullpen. If there is a game tomorrow, it'll be at 6 o'clock, as Joe's mentioned many times. I don't think Billy Martin is named a starter. Some say Holtzman, some say Hunter. You have to wait and see, I guess, Tom. Two-strike pitch. After throwing the plate, Munson's going to make the play, and he does. Griffey is out. Munson to Shambliss. Derby like bench pops out from behind hole plate very quickly. Well, it wasn't that quick that time. Griffey thought it might go foul. He hesitated. We got two of the best in the business behind home plate today, guys. Yes, sir. This World Series. So there are two away, and here is Joe Morgan. Morgan bounced out in the first, walked, stole a base, and scored, and then single. It's a strike. Five for 14 in the World Series. One ball, one strike.
fastball misses. Two balls and a strike in the eighth. Cincinnati leading three to two. Ed Figueroa. Nolan started for Cincinnati. McEnany has come on. Deep to right center field. Rivers going to have room. Makes the play. So it's one, two, three for Cincinnati in the eighth. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Cincinnati three, New York two. Yankee Stadium from above. Cincinnati leading three to two, bottom of the eighth, and Billy Martin has gone to his bench. Lou Pinella, who is three for eight in this series, will pinch it for Carlos May. Will McEnany came on to get Shambliss to end the seventh inning. Greg Nettles, the on-deck batter. Line drive, left field. Foster is there. Boy, he makes that outfield really look easy. He does. Every time the Yankees hit the ball on the nose, somebody catches it. Here is Nettles. Nettles bounced out. In the second inning, single to right in the fourth, had a base hit in the sixth. Strike. Three for 12. Great medals in the series. Takes it low, one and one. Cincinnati three, New York two, we're in the bottom of the eighth. Balls in the strike. Nobody on. One man out. Outside. Three balls in the strike. Ball four. Nettles draws the base on balls. And just as McEnany delivered the pitch, Concepcion moved behind the bag. He had overshifted. McEnany walks Greg Nettles, and it brings up Oscar Gamble. Raleigh Eastwick has begun to throw now for Cincinnati. Gamble popped to the third baseman in the second inning. Safe on air in the fourth and popped to the second baseman in the sixth. Three to two, Cincinnati leading in the bottom of the eighth. Left field, George Foster going back. He's there. Two outs. It's a perfect outfield for Cincinnati's speed. Any of those long fly balls or line drive, with the speed they have, they can just outrun and run all day long. They've done it throughout the whole series. The pitchers have been able to take advantage of the park, keeping the ball away. Tough situation, making them hit the deep part of the park. When you go into a park, as you well know, guys, you always say, which is the outfield where I can get the most outs? And here it's from right center to left center. Big park. Randolph, strike one. You play them a certain way, and your pitchers have to pitch them, so they hit that way. And Cincinnati pitching has been able to do that. Bouncing ball to Concepcion. He's got it to Morgan. The force is on. That ends the inning. So at the end of eight complete innings, Cincinnati three, New York two. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. It'll be Perez, Dreesen, and Foster in the top of the ninth against Figueroa, who has gone all the way. Cincinnati three runs, six hits, and two errors. The Yankees two runs, eight hits, and no errors. Looking ahead, the bottom of the ninth for New York, it'll be Mason or a pinch hitter, Rivers and White. Perez bounced out. Shambliss unassisted in the second inning, lined the center field in the fourth, bounced out third to first in the sixth. Five for 16 in the World Series. 
affectionately called Dog, Top Dog. Billy Martin, down to three outs. Sparky Anderson, three outs away from back-to-back -back championships. One ball, one strike. Nobody on, nobody out. Top of the ninth, Cincinnati leading by a run. Hot smash, foul ball. Tony Kubek is headed for the Cincinnati clubhouse. Should they win, we will, as always, been doing it for 30 years now, we'll cover the winning clubhouse. One ball and two strikes, Tony Perez. It's the first time as we look at Morgan, Johnny Bench, Sparky Anderson. First time that Figueroa, I believe, shook Munson off, Phil. Mm -hmm. You very seldom shake Munson off. Two balls and two strikes. Top of the ninth, Cincinnati leading three to two. and complains about it, as you can see. Three balls, two strikes. Too close to take with two strikes. Take a pitch like that, you're usually just fooled. Mm -hmm. Billy Martin chipping in. You see Gene Michaels on the headset. Woody Tebbets, Carl Keir, Clyde King. Second defense with the walkie talkie as the ball is fouled off. A lot of the Cincinnati players are CB fans. I think uh, Johnny is Sidewinder, Johnny Bench. Mike Lum is Hawaiian Punch. <laughs> That's the stick, Gene Michael. There you see Michael. Oh, I wish Broderick Crawford would say hello to him. <laughs> Ball four. Perez draws the base on balls. That's a fourth walk. Given up by Figueroa. It brings up Dreesen, who flied the left in the second inning, fouled to the catcher in the fourth, popped to the second baseman in the sixth. 0 for 3. The designated hitters, that really tells the story. Cincinnati 357, the Yankees .070. And Sparky said he doesn't like the designated hitter. And after having used him, he thinks less of it. Yankee designated hitters haven't even hit the area code. Nope. Did well during the season, but not this year. One ball, one strike. Nobody out. Perez is at first base. 3-2, Cincinnati leading top of the ninth. It's Mason, or a pinch hitter, Rivers and White for the Yankees in the bottom half of the ninth. Two balls in this fight. Munson won't throw the ball back. Figueroa has to motion for it. He's John with Bill Deegan. They're going at it pretty good. Foul out of play. Two balls and two strikes. Usually you're pretty good if you keep your head out towards center field. Munson right now is shaking his head. He's, he's letting Deegan have it a little bit. As long as you don't show the umpire up, you're in pretty good shape. Two 
2-2 pitch. Gets away from Munson. It heads for the dugout, misses it, and Perez stops at second. It's a wild pitch charged to Figueroa. Here's the pitch. Looked like a breaking ball. Thurman tried to backhand it, couldn't find it for a minute. Every time you throw the curve that breaks away, it bounces the other way, Joe, doesn't it? Sure it does. It's a play you just have to practice in spring training, boy, and you hate it. Lee Wire's calling time. Bruce Fremming is calling time now at first base. They got some jawing going on. Billy Martin and Fremming. Oh, he threw Martin out. Oh, here we go. Bottom of the ninth inning, and now Fremming is going after with Martin. I thought in the World Series you had to have a little patience. Something a lot of the Yankee ball players have said, Joe. They're not not taking anything away from the American League umpires, but they figure the American League umpires don't want to make it look like they're giving the Yankees any breaks. And so a lot of the close calls have gone against the Yankees. Billy Martin ejected. Earl Weaver was thrown out by Shad Crawford in 1969. And now Billy Martin has just been launched. It's kind of a, I have to say, a unique time. Nothing was really happening. It was a wild pitch. Perez went to second. And Wire, third base, pointed to the dugout. Then Froming pressed the button, and Billy was gone. Foul tip. There is Fremming. Gone. Now here comes Billy. You're going to throw me out. You're going to hear my whole speech. And if you could read lips, you know what Fleming said. That was rated X. I think Billy was still arguing over that pitch that uh, Deegan called the ball on Perez. Three balls, two strikes. Nobody out. Perez is at second. Cincinnati's leading three to two. Win the top of the ninth. Dreesen draws the walk. And here comes Yogi, who obviously is running the club with Billy Martin having been ejected. Yogi getting a standing ovation from this crowd. I don't think there's anybody that doesn't love Yogi. Well, if they <laughs> take a roll, get a big hand. Yep. Good. Listen. Yankee bench really congratulating Figaro, who did a tremendous job. The line score on him, three runs, six hits, and two errors. There's a break in the action as we wait for the new Yankee pitcher here in New York with the score, Cincinnati 3, New York 2. Yogi Bear, the acting manager, as we wait for Tidro to come on. Cincinnati leading 3-2. to two. Base runners at first and second with top of the ninth. Nobody out. Should this game end and Cincinnati become the champions? Still a big weekend of sports on NBC. Next Saturday, the richest women's tennis tournament ever, the $200,000 Colgate inaugural. The players left as of Thursday, Chrissy Everett, Nancy Ritchie, Virginia Wade, Martina Navratilova. They'll be competing for a top prize of $45,000 coverage of the singles finals and the Colgate inaugural begins Saturday from Mission Hills Country Club in Palm Springs. Begins at 4 o'clock Eastern time. And then Sunday it'll be, there it is, Grandstand always begins it on a doubleheader football. Check the local listings for the game in your area. Cincinnati versus Houston will be the feature game. And it begins with Grandstand at 1230. So it's pretty simple. 
The Yankees keep it going. We're going to have baseball tennis doubleheader on Saturday, baseball football doubleheader on Sunday, and if it ends tonight, it's tennis on Saturday and a big Sunday football day. As we look at Joe Morgan, Sparky Anderson, Johnny Bench. Johnny Bench will be singing with Bob Hope in Cincinnati on Sunday. His feature song, Bad Boy Leroy Brown. And on October 29th, Friday, two hours, Bob Hope's World of Comedy. Lucille Ball, Neil Simon. We'll have sketches, past quarter century of his shows. Jack Benny, George Burns. That's October 29th, 8 to 10 on NBC. As Munson talks to Kidrow with Perez at second base. Not much strategy to go by. There's nobody out. First and second. Cincinnati leading by a run. Three to two, win in ninth. Forced to bunt in this situation, Joe? No way. No way. Huh? Two bunts, I think Sparky and I will both be really surprised. Straight away center field. Perez is tagging up, and so is the base runner Dreesen at first. Rivers makes the play. Perez is heading for third. The throw is not in time. So they get Foster, but they pick up a base. One out. Dreesen remains at first. Johnny Bench is the hitter. Bench popped to the second baseman in the third. Hit a two-run homer in the fourth and fly to right in the seventh. Dick Tidrow. Second series game. He pitched two scoreless innings in the first game. His first game. First, Perez is the third. Deep to left field. Roy White going way back, way back. Leaps and home run. It's a home run. They've signaled home run. Even though Roy White, the left field umpire, Lou DeMuro, has signaled a home run. So Johnny Bench has just hit his second home run of the night. A three-run homer. And the Cincinnati Reds now lead 6-2. to two. Roy White really gave that ball a chase. And here it is. White has made many plays like this, Joe, during the year. He's got a way of timing his leap. But it did not hit his glove. You saw it hit the fan there and then come back on the field. He quickly chased the ball. Here's another angle from our center field camera. Look at him find the wall, get above the fence. You see the ball hit the fan. But Lou DeMuro, the umpire, left field, ruled home run immediately. We get a gust of wind here. And boy, that's blowing a lot of the fans right out of the ballpark, along with Johnny Bench's three-run homer. Johnny Bench. Just about wrapped it up for Bench to be the hero of this series. What a series he's had. Geronimo fouls it off. Two home runs by Bench in this game ties a record for a National League player. There you see him. Eight for 15 he's had in this series. Foul out of play. Both catchers have hit well. Johnny Bench really productive. He has driven in five of the six runs. Foster drove in the other one for Cincinnati. Out of play. Count remains. One ball, two strikes. One out. Three runs are in. Johnny Bench jumped on the first pitch. A line shot. Roy White really gave it a chase. Out of play. One ball, two strikes, one out. Nobody on, three runs in. Cincinnati six, New York two, top of the ninth.
Hot smash, base hit, extra bases for Geronimo. It's a two base hit. Van came up with the ball, so it's a ground rule double. Geronimo is on at second. And here is Dave Concepcion. Concepcion walked in the third, bounced out, third to first in the fifth, single to center in the seventh. He's a long way from that plate. Sidewinding Tidrow has backed him up a bit. One strike. Man, that Concepcion uh, got stepped on by Randolph bothering him in the left hand. Got him right at the fingernail. Mm -hmm. Fair ball. It's extra bases. Geronimo will come to score as the fan grabs that ball. And Geronimo has himself a double. It's a 7-2 ball game. And here comes Yogi once again. Well, the Cincinnati Reds really putting it on ice here in the top of the ninth. Johnny Bench, a three-run homer. Concepcion has just driven in another run. And it's seven to two. Didro is being replaced. The Yankees jumped out in front in their bottom half of the first when after two were out, Sparky Lyle looks like he's going to be the new pitcher. Munson single. And that was to be the first of four hits. Munson single and Shambliss double to left center field. But then the Reds came back with three in the fourth. A walk to Morgan. He stole second. Perez lined out. Dreesen fouled out. And then Foster with two out single to left to drive in Morgan to tie it up. And Johnny Bench hit a two run homer. That made it a three to one ball game. Bench has just hit a big home run here in the ninth inning. They've scored four. We've got a break in the action here. We're in the top of the ninth, 7-2 Cincinnati. Phil, before the game, they were asking different people. I'm sure they asked you, because they were asking everybody, to describe the Cincinnati ball club. What is it about them that makes them win? And I used two expressions that I'd heard weren't mine. Mr. Ricky used to always talk about errors of enthusiasm. And that's what these guys have. They make mistakes, boy. They, they make you pay for it, and, and they're enthusiastic. And Pete Reeser had a great line. He said, to be great, you have to have inner conceit. Oh, they've got that, absolutely. They know they can do the job. Sparky Lyle. Certainly our thanks to National League, Blake Cullen, the public relations director. Dick Wagner, Vice President of the Cincinnati, Jim Ferguson, the Publicity Director, Roger Rule, Promotion Director, and for the Yankees, Cedric Tallis, the Vice President, and Marty Appel, Publicity, and Barry Landers, Promotion Director, for all the help they've given us, Bob Fischel of the American League, as Pete Rose. Takes a strike. Strike two. Two strikes, one out. That's Concepcion at second base, seven to two. Cincinnati leading. Right at Randolph, he's got it. Flips to Shambliss. Rose is out. Concepcion moves to third. Thanks to Commissioner Boy Kuhn, Johnny Johnson, Joe Reichler, Bob Weirs, Director of Information, Dave Meister, Director of Radio and TV. Many people involved in a World Series, but right now it's Cincinnati and the Yankees. Cincinnati, bouncing ball. Griffin, out. Chambliss, unassisted. That ends the ninth inning. We go to the bottom of the ninth, Cincinnati 7, New York 2.
bottom of the ninth inning. Cincinnati out in front by the score of seven to two. Otto Velez has come out of the Yankee dugout. He'll be the pinch hitter against Will McEnany. Velez is batting for Mason. Johnny Bench, tremendous night. Two run homer in the fourth, a three run homer in the ninth. There he is, a franchise. Out of the left. Out of play, strike one. One ball, one strike. Gary Nolan started. Will McEnany came on in the seventh inning. Foul back. One ball, two strikes. Cincinnati seven, New York two. Bottom of the ninth, game four. Velez is out on strikes, a curveball. McEnany gets his first strikeout. One out, and it brings up Mickey Rivers. Still trying to hit it past Rose. Needless to say, Rose is right on his doorstep as we look at the Cincinnati dugout. They're poised, ready for the victory celebration. One strike to count. Two youngsters fighting for that foul ball down there. That's why time is being called. Ah, oh, they got him back in the stands. Right to Pete Rose, he got him. The one ball he hit hard and Pete Rose was there. Mickey Rose, Mickey Rivers finally lines one at Rose and what do you think, Phil? He caught it. It's right there. Two outs and the Yankees are down to their last out. Roy White. If Roy White should get on, it'll give Munson a chance to be the first player ever to get five hits in the game. He's already gotten four. Two balls, no strikes. Two outs, seven to two, bottom of the ninth. Cincinnati leading. This could be it, left field, George Foster, Geronimo Foster makes the catch, that's it, the Cincinnati Reds win the World Series in four straight, it was a sweep, the final score, Cincinnati seven, the New York Yankees two. And the Cincinnati Reds win their fourth World Championship, they won in 1919, 1940, 1975, and 1976, becoming the first National League team to win in consecutive years since the New York Giants did it 1921 and 1922. And the Reds seven game sweep in postseason play and the first team to do that and there they are led by Pete Rose, Pat Zachary. It's the first four to nothing series since 1966 when Baltimore did it over Los Angeles. Bob Bailey, Cincinnati Reds have just won it. There goes the commissioner. The winner is Nolan, it's his first series victory. Seven starts and the American League edge is now 43 to 30 in World Series play as the Cincinnati Reds defeat the New York Yankees 7 to 2. Phil, what do you think? Well, I'm very disappointed. <laughs> I know I was rooting for the Yankees, but uh, it was unbelievable what this club did. They made uh, a couple of mistakes tonight, but like you said, they make a mistake, but they got a string on it, they take it back. It's a tough ball club, this big red machine. And now you see Johnny Bench, who 
was voted the most valuable player in this World Series. Benchy was two-time National League most valuable player, was the most valuable player in this series, and certainly deservedly so, but a tip of the hat to Thurman Munson, his counterpart on the Yankees. Munson had himself four big base hits, but Bench had two big home runs, a two-run homer in the fourth, and he had that big blast in the ninth, which really nailed it for the Cincinnati Reds. There is the clubhouse, Bob Bailey, Alcala, there is Nolan, Pat Zachary, Pete Rose, Larry Starr, the trainer, McEnany right in the middle. And shortly, of course, the champagne will come. And Tony Kubek is there. And let's go to Tony in the clubhouse. Hi, right, Joe and Phil. With me, little Joe Morgan. You had a few bad hops, but congratulations. Second consecutive world championship. It's always more difficult to repeat, Joe. Right. The second time round is always the toughest. And I tell you what, I'm very pleased. I'm very happy for all the guys because they're a great bunch of ball players, and they put it all together there after, toward the end of the season and went right through the playoffs and right on into the World Series. And they're, they're great. It's just great to be on a team like this. Joe, I think it can honestly be said, and your pitching staff has been maligned, but they gave up just eight earned runs in four ball games. They said that was your weakness. I've never believed it's a weakness. I know you haven't either. Right. I've said all along, ever since I've been here, that the pitching staff is underrated here because we don't have a big 20-game winner because Sparky uses the whole staff all the time. And that keeps guys from winning 20 games, but they do the job that we asked of them. Hold them close and we'll get them some runs and that's what we've been doing all year and we worked out that well in the playoffs in the World Series. Joe, the big question's been asked most of this week during the off days, rain yesterday, is this ball club really as good as the all-time great teams? I really believe it is. I think you could play in any era and compete with any team in the history of baseball. I don't see how you can have a much better team. You may can, but I don't see how because we have hitting, I mean average hitting, we have power hitters, we have base running speed, we have base stealers, we have a good defense, and we have a very good pitching staff as you just mentioned, and I don't see how you can have much better than that because we put it all together and use it all, and we plus on top of that we're very aggressive. I can do one more thing. West Stock said you're supposed to call him about something out in the west coast he's a new pitching coach right. in seattle you right. give him a call he wants you to do a clinic for him okay thank, thank you, you joe you. all right right now the commissioner of baseball boy kuhn sparky anderson congratulations the president of the club bob hausam the chairman of the ball club mr lewis snippert congratulations to y'all and mr commissioner i'm gonna let you do the honors all right tony i'm very proud on behalf of professional baseball to present to gus and to bob and to sparky and to this great championship team of reds the first team to win two consecutive world championships in the National League since 1921-22. A truly great team, beautiful, totally emblematic of this team and what you've achieved. Congratulations to you all on behalf of everybody in baseball. Let the boss speak. There you go. <laughs> all right, let me get over here. This is the chairman of the board of the Cincinnati Reds, Mr. Lewis Snippert. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Well, it's a great satisfaction, to say, say the least, and we're very happy for, for the team to put up the show they did, and, and the, uh, the team here... Uh, and in New York was, was, gave us a good go of it. Mr. Nippert, I see your wife give you a little peck. You've got all lipstick over your face. Congratulations. <laughs> Bob Housem, the president of the ball club. Well, Tony, this was one I wanted more than anything because I think that uh, okay, we'll uh, you, you may only see the last balanced teams of baseball, and I wanted it so bad because this was a great club, and they worked so hard, and Sparky and his coaches did such a great job. Bobby, you did it in such style. You proved that your pitching staff that you helped put together with some trades and bringing them through the farm system, it's been maligned, but it's been a good pitching staff. It showed in this series. They did a fine job. I think everybody did a great job for us, all 25. Uh, they helped us win, and it takes 25, Tony, as you know, when you played. And it's more difficult to repeat. Commissioner Sparky Anderson, I want to get a word from Sparky. Congratulations, Spark. Tony, thank you. But the proudest I think I am of this club is they showed that you can have class and pride and still be world champions. You don't have to be madmen and, and the different kind. This club here is the greatest club that's come down the pike for one reason. They got more class than any other baseball team has ever had. There's one guy shows the way, and that's you, Sparky. Thank you so much. Commissioner, any final words? Johnny Bench with two big home runs. Baseball commissioner. All right. Thank you, sir. Johnny, what a way to have a World Series after somewhat of a disappointing year. Fantastic. Two what home runs. What a way to make a year. That that made it, Tony. I, you know, mom and dad out there, and I know they're excited as I am. I, I think in all my years, this is probably the biggest thrill I've had. All right, John. We're going to have you take a look and tell us about the home run that you hit, the second home run. Well, I thought he was going to throw me a fastball running in on me. I was where the play, and it looked like it was a slider. I really stayed with it. I wanted to hit the ball in the air somewhere and try to get that run in because I really didn't feel safe with a one-run lead at that point. Johnny Rivers didn't get on base to try and challenge your arm. Every time somebody did, you gunned them out. 
the Yankee ball club struggle along, but your pitching staff to me is the thing that was so important. I know to you, you guys in this ball club. Well, I, they didn't get the credit. I knew they could do the job. I really wanted to play them down as much as I could because sometimes when you don't give a guy enough credit, you really don't look for that much. And these guys, Gary Nolan, uh, you know what a story, and Gullet, uh, going, you know, it's just you can go down the line, Tony. But this is just one great effort. I, I've never really enjoyed anything as much as I have tonight. It's John, John, I don't know if you've heard this or not. Our producer Roy Hammond just gave me the word. You were named most valuable player of the 1976 World Series. Congratulations. Thank you very much. What a, what a thrill. I, 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 it makes up. It makes up for it, everybody. And I'm just so excited because this ball club deserved it. John, congratulations. And thank you. Come on. Let's come on to Pete. Peter. Hey, congratulations. Thanks, you repeated. You win. proved you can play with anybody and maybe any team in the history of baseball. It's a great ball club, a great bunch of guys. Got to give credit to Bench tonight. He swung the bat in the whole series and hit two home runs tonight. But I think got to give a little extra credit to our pitchers. who give up eight runs in the four games. And everybody knocked our pitching staff coming into this series. And they had a two-point earned run average for the four games. So it was a strictly a team effort, and we're very happy. Pete, you've been noted as an offensive ball player. You've never gotten the credit that you should for playing defense. When you're at second base, left field, now third base. But you took the bat psychologically right out of the hands of Mickey Rivers. That no, was quite a performance. You know, I didn't think he could hit the ball to left. He's never shown me he could hit the ball. Even watching him in batting practice, he could hit the ball hard to left field down the line. And uh, the last time up, he hit a rope right to me. But, uh, you know, I had him thinking anyway about the bunt. And you can't give some, you know, you can't give Mickey Rivers a bunt base hit because he gets on and just steals second, steals third. And, and uh, that was our psychology behind that. Sparky told me just shake hands with him if I had to to be in there. But uh, it's great to win, Tony. You was on several winners, and it's, it's tough to win two in a row. And uh, here we are, and uh, we're just very happy. Better club than last year? Oh, this is the best uh, club in 14 years I've been associated with at Cincinnati, and I think it was strictly a team effort this year. Uh, Mike Lum helped us, Bob Bailey, uh, Dreesen, our bench has been great, Armbrister, Plummer, Flynn, the whole, the whole crew. They just did a whole great Pete, job. Congratulations. Thank you. Let's go back upstairs quickly. Thanks. Okay, Tony. Phil, I know we were watching it, the two of us, and we had to comment that uh, it was kind of a different than most celebrations. Johnny Bench with the quiet pride that he had uh, almost choked up with emotion because it's been a tough thing for Johnny Bench with the injuries and this was a genuine big thrill for him. Bob Housem almost with sadness in his voice said something that uh, you just wonder if it was uh, something in the future that he was thinking about. He said this may be the last balanced team. Is he thinking about the free agents that may be on the market? You just wonder about that. But at any rate, the Cincinnati Reds are a good, tough ball club. They swept the Yankees, and I guess the statistics really prove it. Reds hit for 313, the Yankees for 222, 22 runs, 8 for the Yankees. Phil, your ball club was a good ball club. Joe, they don't have to hang their head in shame. No, I don't. think they had a great year. I think they got a taste of it now, and I think next year they'll come out and want to get back in and hopefully face the Cincinnati Reds again. They did not play the tight ball. Tonight, they got a lot of breaks, more than they got in the first three games, but just weren't able to take advantage of it. You've got to give credit to Cincinnati. Concepcion with a great play to break up a rally. You can just about go right down the line. I think that uh, Joe Morgan said it best. They've got aggressive base running. They've got good feeling. It makes no difference where you go. And with the designated hitter, at least with a pitcher in there, you can walk eight guys to get to the guy you want to. But this is a good, tough ball club. There are all kinds of statistics. I've got all kinds of notes. Foster... In case you want records, he had eight putouts. That's a new series record, which is the least thing. It's it's about as exciting, I guess, as kissing your sister that you got the record like that when you win four. And the Reds went through that series, Phil, using only nine starters, not counting the pitchers. That tells you something. Yes, it does. Well, the Yankees, they were swept by the Cincinnati Reds. The Cincinnati Reds, back-to-back. -back. Phil, it was good to work with you, I'll tell you that. We Thanks, enjoyed Joe. It. Great again. And, of course, it was great to work with Tony Kubek. We've had some great shots in this series. There are a lot of people who have to work very, very hard to put those shots together. We're going to show you some of these shots, and we're going to give you a list of the credits, the people who really make all this possible as we begin with our over-the-head helicopter shot. So this is Joe Garagiola saying goodbye for Phil Rizzuto, Tony Kupak, and Marty Brenneman. We're from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, New York. Until next April 9th, we'll see you then on NBC's Game of the Week. Game four of the 1976 World Series has been brought to you by your Chrysler Plymouth dealers who invite you to buy or lease the 1977 Volari, the small car with the accent on comfort. And by Gillette, makers of new right guard deodorant stick for all day odor protection. Don't get dressed without it. And by the Miller Brewing Company, brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer.
Players left as of Thursday, Chrissy Everett, Nancy Rishi, Virginia Wade. That's on Saturday. As I look at those names, having worked with many of them, you can just see who were, what cameras they manned. The great shots from the center field camera, from third base, first base, from behind the plate. Plays at second base, you were right there. The throws from the catcher. Good job, guys. You always hear about the Joe Gargiolas and Tony Kubeks and the Phil Rizzutos and Marty Brennemans. These are the people that make it possible. And a reminder about next Sunday, we'll have a big doubleheader, football doubleheader, and it all starts with Grandstand. Check your local listings for the game. Of course, it begins with Grandstand, and as always, right here on NBC. NBC.